Hi and welcome to another Visual Composer video tutorial. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at a topic that kind of caused a little bit of confusion in the previous video that I did of this, which is the parallax effect in Visual Composer. So in this video I'm going to go over that with a refresh for the 2017 update for the latest version of Visual Composer. We're going to go through step by step with no additional themes in store. We're just using the free theme that comes with Visual Composer that you can download from them. So it's all set up ready to work with Visual Composer. So there's going to be nothing else included in this video other than Visual Composer. Composer, WordPress and that free theme from the developers of Visual Composer. So let's take a look at how we can create this parallax effect right now. So I created a blank page in Visual Composer, just put in a simple row, three columns, we've got some information on the page. We're now ready to start creating our parallax effect. So what we're going to do is come down, click to create a new row add the new row in there and just position that where I want, which is going to be at the top. Now we need to set up some of the basic parameters for the row before we put the content in there. Because most of the effect, the parallax effect and the spacing and all that kind of stuff is primarily going to come from the row, not the content that sits inside it. So to do that, we're just going to click on the small icon that's the edit this row icon. And from there, we have all of the options available for the row settings. You can see we've got the normal design option that allows us to create margins and padding and so on. We're going to leave that for a moment. Let's just take a look at the general tab. You can see we've got the normal options to specify how this row is going to interact with the design and layout. So you can see if we expand that out, we've got default stretch row and so on. Well, we're going to use stretch row for this example because I don't want the content or the no padding option to sort of take effect. So we're going to say stretch the row out so the background will be full width if that's applicable to the theme you're using. But the content will stay confined within the sort of size of the page layout. Column gaps, we're not worrying too much about because we're not dealing with any columns, no full height or equal height, all to do with columns. What we're going to do a default position. For this example, I want the image to primarily sit at the bottom. So I'm going to sit, choose bottom from there. We're not using a video background, so I can leave that as is. But we are going to use the parallax effect, so we can click and take a look at the options that are available there. As you can see, we can choose none, so there's no parallax effect enabled. And we can choose from simple or with fade. For this example, we're just going to choose simple. From there, we can now choose the image we want to set as the background to our parallax effect. So always when you're creating parallax effects, make sure that the image you're using is larger than this kind of space you want to fill. So you have that space, that headroom to be able to have the parallax effect take effect behind. So I'm just going to click on the plus so we can go to our media library and we can choose the image we're going to use. And I'm going to choose this one and I'm just going to click on set image. That's now put the image in there for us ready. We can now control the parallax speed. In other words, the speed at which the background transitions at a different rate to our scrolling effect. So the lower the number, the smaller the amount of movement that we're going to see, the higher the number, the greater the amount of movement. Again, just remember that this is kind of dependent upon the size of the image you're working with. If you have too small an image and too high a parallax speed, you may find you end up losing your image as you scroll too far past it. So for this example, we're going to set this to be three. We'll leave that as is. I'm not going to set any CSS animation. I don't need the row I and I don't need row ID, sorry, and I don't need the disable row. So everything is set up in there. The next thing I need to do for this is just make some room for the content because I only want to have a sort of title and a button. So I want to have plenty of space around it for the parallax effect, the image to show through and give us a nice effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the padding section and I'm going to set a padding of 150 pixels, top and bottom. Don't need to worry about the left and the right hand side with this example. So we click on save changes and we've now set up our parallax effect in our row. So we're now ready to put the content into this, ready to move on. Okay, so let's add some content in there. Like I said earlier, we're just going to put some text in and we're going to put a button in there. The kind of thing you may want to use in a simple parallax effect for. So let's just click to add some item into the actual content itself and we'll choose custom heading. And from there, we're just going to set in some title text. So we're just going to say, ooh, a heading. We don't want anything to do with the URL on this. We can set the element tag if we want to. I'll leave that as is, and we'll set the alignment to be centered. The font size, we'll set to something nice and large, like 54 pixels. Line height, because we've only got a simple line in there, there's not multiple lines, I don't need to worry too much about that. And we can set the text color if we want to, and just for this, I'll just choose something simple like a black color. So the next thing I can do is I can go through and choose a font that I want to use, but for this, I'll just say use the theme default. 
and we can apply some animation to it. So let's just go in and choose something like, let's try fade down. As you can see, that gives us a, a little preview of what that looks like. I don't need to worry about anything else at this point. If I want to tweak it, I can do. I can always come back in later. But for now, we'll just click on Save Changes. And we'll come back in and click to add something else in. And this time, we'll come in and we'll choose a button. So let's just choose an ordinary button that's part of Visual Composer. And we'll just check to put the text on there. So we just say Click Me. We'll set a URL and we'll just put another link in there. I'm not really bothered. Style, if we wanted to choose that, we can choose we want rounded, square, and so on. And we can set our color. So let's go for a nice classic red on there. And let's go for a nice large button. We'll set it to be centered. And no, we don't want it to be a full width button. I don't want an icon. I will set some animation though. Let's try and set something in this. We'll say, let's say fade up big so that it comes up from the bottom. So we're going to have these meet in the middle. Again, same with the things like the element ID and so on. I'm not going to worry about that. I will go in and set some margin around this though. So let's just set a 20 pixel margin at the top so we don't have the text and the button too close to each other. Hit save changes and we're pretty much good to go. So let's just update that page. Once we have updated that, let's go and take a look at what this looks like. So if we come on, you can see there's our animation effect. So we know all that is working right. The button works as you'd expect. Now if we scroll on the page, We'll see the background, we'll get that parallax effect. So it now moves at a different rate to the rest of the page. So we get that sort of pseudo depth effect in there. And that's really all there is to it when you're working with Visual Composer and the parallax effect. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's cleared up any confusion you may have had in the previous video from last year and giving you an update to the way that Visual Composer and the parallax effect works with a page layout. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.